Hi, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Satyam Vagani. I'm Senior Vice President and General Manager for the IoT and AI business at Nutanix. First off, uh, thanks a lot for uh, spending the time with us uh, this morning. Uh, I hope to make it interesting. Um, so, you know, for my talk today, I wanted to spend a little bit of time sharing some experience and specifically four very interesting lessons we learned uh, doing IoT projects uh, with our customers and partners. And specifically, these lessons are uh, from leveraging edge computing uh, for IoT and AI use cases. Uh, we are very heavily biased towards the edge because we think that for a large number of enterprise IoT use cases, the edge is going to be a core point of insertion of technology. Uh, if you guys flew into Barcelona for this conference, you already see the, saw the edge in action. You probably walked through one of these gates at the airport. Uh, very soon, and soon it's going to be the cars we drive and the stores we shop in. And so this is you know, much closer to fact than fiction. In fact, <laughs> we see it in a much more surreal way. Uh, these are pictures from two different demonstrations in two different cities I hope all of you will recognize in recent times, and unfortunately for one of the cities, the <laughs> edge works a little too well. So, but I don't want to focus on the ethics of edge computing. I hope uh, that uh, in general, uh, the, the benefits of edge computing are going to outweigh some of the downsides that we are going to have to deal with along the way. So I'm a big believer in the kind of, you know, bringing it to fruition. And so specifically, uh, at least from Nutanix point of view, uh, you know, we are a provider of technology to the world. And we got interested in edge computing because we think that's the next frontier of computing that is unsolved yet. Is if you think about the digital transformation journey, there's a lot of enterprises who have digitized their business processes in the core, whether it's in the private data center or in the public cloud. They've automated a lot of systems, ERP, et cetera, to get insights out of what those processes are doing, and then act on those insights. And so similarly, we think you know, now the next big set of insights are going to come out of uh, businesses' points of presence in the real world, you know, at the edge. So we are talking about hospitals, factories, you know, retail stores, ships, et cetera, et cetera, uh, airports. And so all of those insights need to come out of a new substrate of computing, that's the edge. And the amount of data that is going to be produced at the edge is so large, you know, in the year 2020, it's going to be 40 times more than all the data that is going to be produced in the private and public clouds of the world combined. The amount of data is so large that the only way to process it is going to be AI. It's going to be impossible to process it uh, you know, uh, by humans. And so edge and AI, in our opinion, kind of goes hand in hand. Those two technologies are almost inseparable from each other. They are almost synonymous uh, from our point of view. And I'll share with you some concrete examples to, to make the case for this. Now, what it means in our technology, from a technology point of view, is we are going to move on from kind of easier use cases of IoT, if you will. You know, there are use cases of IoT which are more about tracking assets, doing dashboards in the cloud, which is all about getting data from sensors, moving it to the cloud, and then maybe using it for simple, simple form of insights, you know, dashboarding, basic status reporting, and so on. We are going to move on from these use cases to slightly more uh, complicated use cases, uh, slightly more challenging use cases, slightly more impactful use cases. And those are going to involve real-time data processing on the edge. And that's going to need a new substrate of computing. And then long-term data processing in the cloud. And a good example to make this case is a self-driving car. You know, there's a lot of sophistication at the software and hardware level in the car to do self-driving. But at the same time, there's a small amount of data going from the car into the cloud so that people can train the actual AI model for self-driving. And you see that pattern repeating over and over again. I'll share some examples. And so specifically then, you know, we as a company uh, kind of thought about that bigger problem of how to make that prophecy come true. A lot of people are talking about it. And in our opinion, it boils down to three specific problems. 
is you know, we as humans find it very hard to run a single data center very well. And now with edge computing, every factory, every hospital, every retail store is going to be a mission critical point of presence, a mission critical data center that needs to be run, managed, and secured. And so this is a 1,000x harder problem than the problem of running a single data center. So we need to invent a new control plane that can do life cycle management of infrastructure and applications that are going to literally span the planet. And so we are going to have a planet scale management problem. We also need to invent a new computing stack to power these applications because these applications are inherently based on new concepts like data processing and AI or containers and so on. And so we need to provide the technology components to, to kind of to be the substrate for all these applications on the edge. And last but not the least, no edge problem exists in isolation. Any edge application also has a little kind of point of presence in a cloud in the core or in the public cloud. And so we need systems to merge the edge in the cloud, to converge the edge in the cloud, to make it, make it look like one from a developer point of view so that they don't have to worry about the mechanics of how to move data and processing and applications between the edge and the cloud. So those are the three big problems. And again, you know, it's, it's easy to talk about theory. So let me actually explain it through some real world examples. The first one I'm going to use is from a customer of ours. It's called the Compass Group. It's a Fortune 500 food services company. It's the biggest food services company in the world. They operate up, uh, roughly 55,000 different restaurants in the world on behalf of other enterprises. In Europe, for example, they are known by the U.S. brand and some other brands. And in every restaurant, they have a checkout line you got to get your food and stop by a cashier to pay for it. And so their ambition is to do the equivalent of Amazon Go for restaurants, is they think in the future they will have these kiosks and people can stop by the kiosk with their food, the system recognizes everything they bought and they can pay for it, as simple as that. Now, that is a project we help them with, and so the cameras would kind of look at the items you bought and then use AI at the edge to process the information. And this is what it looks like in production. They've been running it since 2018. So it's as simple as that. Now, obviously, it's a pretty complicated system running in the back, but as you can see, it is an extremely intuitive system for anyone to use. Uh, just in France alone, this system recognizes roughly 20,000 different food items. And for every food item, it can also make a distinction between, a, for example, a small salad versus a medium salad and a big salad, and so on and so forth. So it's a pretty sophisticated AI system running on the edge. And you know, if you look under the wraps, it's a bunch of different applications that are integrated together. They have the core food recognition algorithm, which is a set of machine models, one to recognize entrees, one to recognize snacks, one to recognize uh, drinks, and so on and so forth. Uh, there's a UI that you saw at the kiosk, and of course there's a point of sale system, which processes the payment that the user uh, presented the system with. And some applications are traditional, like the one in gray. It's a payment processing system which was <laughs> invented maybe 20 or 30 years ago. It, is not it has not been touched since then. There are roughly 200 different payment processing systems just in Europe that they use. 
And so this is a pretty complicated application and it's a very traditional application. And then the stuff in blue are all new generation applications. They are based on microservices concepts and so they are containerized or they are serverless applications. They use things like machine models and so on, message buses and so on. And so the first problem we had uh, working with, the, with Compass Group was we needed to create an edge computing system which respects not only their future, which is microservices-based applications, but also respects their present. Uh, you know, it answers to some of their core, you know, how do you run point of sale applications which are you know, ridiculously legacy for want of a better word. And so that required us to provide two things. You know, for the things in blue, we needed to create a PaaS, a platform as a service that runs on the edge. And then for the things in uh, gray, we needed to provide a hypervisor so that you know, those things can be encoded in virtual machines and be nicely run on the edge and be managed on the edge. So that's the kind of the technology stack that powers the Compass Group application that you just saw. And then of course we also had to deal, you know, in providing that software layer, we also had to abstract out the hardware complexity that they are already going through. Is you know at the at different cafeterias, the type of system that they are using, both from a compute point of view and from an AI processing point of view, those systems are very different. You know, some cafeterias have basic ASICs, some cafeterias which are much bigger have uh, GPUs and so on. And so there needs to be an operating system that homogenizes the platform services layer so that they don't see the di diversity of those systems and they don't need to worry about how to lifecycle manage those systems both from a hardware and software point of view. So that was the other problem we needed to solve for them. And so all in all, we saw through this use case and a few other use cases that I'm going to share, that it boils down to a few specific design patterns that we need to answer for. And that those design patterns cover pretty much every use case that at least we've seen so far. Is the first thing is we need to answer to the manageability problem and at least the Nutanix answer to the manageability problem was this product called Xi IoT, which is a control plane that sits in the cloud and operators and developers can log into it and then access their planet scale infrastructure all for, from one point of control. They can deploy applications, they can lifecycle manage them, they can monitor them and so on. They can debug them all from a central place and they can everything is secure just because they don't have to actually deal with one edge at a time. And the second thing is the platform at the edge itself. And there's really three different design patterns we see there. Is there's a type one design pattern, which is very traditional applications, like the point of sale application, which needs to be encoded as a VM. And so you need to have a very robust hypervisor on the edge to run those applications. That hypervisor also needs to answer to a very diverse set of devices that it needs to run on, you know, systems as small as a SOC, all the way to a data center class Xeon-based system that might run on the edge. There are new generation applications that are obviously based on microservices, and for that, we need to answer with a system that essentially provides the equivalent of a PaaS, a platform as a service on the edge, that provides enough services such that developers can create a very rich variety of applications around containers and functions and AI and message buses. Things that they can do in the cloud should now be possible on the edge so that they don't have to prefer the edge versus the cloud just because one thing is easier than the other. And last but not the least, this concept of the pass by itself is not enough. We need to create some way to homogenize the edge with the cloud because a lot of applications do tend to move data from the edge to the cloud. You know, just to give you the compass group example, every now and then, the kiosk fails to identify the food that you bought. And you know, that needs to be sent to the cloud as an anomaly, so that the next machine learning run will use all those new images to retrain the machine model. And so we need to create a data pipeline from all the edges to the customer's choice of a cloud. It could be public or private. And so that's the third design pattern for hybrid applications. And most IoT applications, in our opinion, are truly hybrid. So that's the first lesson is, you know, we need to provide a platform that respects the present, 
but also allows people to build for the future new concepts. The, and, and this is not just kind of limited to the compass group example. We are seeing this in many different verticals. You know, if you look at manufacturing, same problem is, you know, the digitization journey in manufacturing often starts with simple things like factory automation. You know, this involves using, you know, deploying SCADA or PLM type, PLM type system, process lifecycle management type systems in a factory. And those are very well-known applications. They are more traditional. These tend to run in virtual machines. And the new thing, the key new requirement for these applications is if we could provide a control plane that can do planet scale application lifecycle management across a thousand factories. So that's a new requirement. The applications are the same, but this, if, if we can secure them well, or if we can lifecycle manage them well, we can provide IT class quality of service to OT assets, traditionally OT assets. So that's a new requirement and that we can answer through our type one design pattern that I talked about. And then of course, you know, a lot of these customers tend to move to industry 4.0 initiatives, which is about leveraging AI to get insights out of all the raw data that these factory automation applications are already collecting on their behalf. And so here's, now I'm going to switch gears and focus more on the right hand side of the equation. You know, all these new generation of applications that are being created all around the world. And in fact, let me share with you a supply chain automation application that we created with uh, one of our partners called the Hardest Group. Uh, we did it for Schneider Electric. Here's what it looks like. Hardest Group is a French company based in Grenoble and help our customer uh, transform their business around supply chain and logistics and working around uh, artificial intelligence and detect the moves uh, in the factories, uh, where the products are, which one you need, IoT even it takes. Helps us to, to make more innovation and to explore uh, new ways to do logistics. We're currently working on a platform that groups different solutions dedicated to data analysis and insight generation. C'est la première fois qu'au sein d'entrepôt, on avait l'opportunité de faire de la reconnaissance d'image, de la reconnaissance de process opérationnel via l'image. We're currently working on developing version 2.0 that will uh, be released on October 2019. Version 2.0 will integrate edge computing capabilities. We're working on that with our partner Nutanix. The technological choices we've made allow for scalability. So that means that we'll see more instances of the product being uh, deployed worldwide and more use cases being served. We're convinced that uh, Nutanix is really uh, the right partner for us. So, um, you know, hopefully you saw the subtitles in the video. Uh, sorry for my French bias. I love Europe equally, but uh, a few of our early customers, partners ha happen to be in France. Uh, you know, what you saw in the Hardest Group video was they created a, a machine vision based system. The idea is in a warehouse, you already have cameras uh, everywhere in the warehouse and now they are leveraging feeds from those cameras, applying AI on top to understand how people and goods are moving around in a warehouse. And so in a very unobtrusive manner without deploying new sensors, which tends to kind of make IoT projects very complicated, without deploying new sensors, they are able to leverage things that already exist and get new insights to their end user. And so we think this is a kind of killer use case of IoT. Machine vision at the edge, uh, you know, obviously through AI, uh, to, to digitize human kind of, you know, digitize previously non-digitizable processes. And so this design pattern repeats itself in many different use cases, scenarios, you know, product quality inspection in IoT is a similar such scenario where you're going to say source data from say industrial cameras or other sensors and use AI at the edge to figure out whether the product is well formed or malformed. Uh, you know, uh, predictive maintenance is a similar design pattern. You're going to source telemetry data from machines and use AI at the edge to, to detect whether the machine is going to break down or not. In all these use cases, you need to answer to a few stakeholders. 
you need to answer to developers who are actually creating these machine models and pushing them out literally almost on a weekly basis, if not on a daily basis. And so you need to have a system that allows them to scalably push out new machine models to hundreds or thousands of different locations without them having to worry about the mechanics of what it takes to actually do that propagation. You need to worry about operators who worry about security, who worry about how do I make sure that the wrong version of the application doesn't run uh, on the factory floor and so on. And then of course you've got to worry about end users who need to consume data insights coming out of factories and so on, warehouses, and they can look at their dashboard, see if the business is running well or not. And so this is the design pattern that we answer to in the hardest group use case and many other use cases. And so if you actually look at this design pattern uh, you know, carefully, really it comes down to providing a platform as a service on the edge to run these new generation applications. And you know, uh, we've seen a lot many IoT projects and a lot many practitioners kind of boil that problem down to saying, okay, great, so we are going to run some Kubernetes on the edge. We'll get it done tomorrow. And we'll maybe run some TensorFlow models on the edge. Well, it turns out it's much harder. It's, of course, easier to prototype it, and people get a sense of victory. But in my opinion, that's a red herring, because it is much, much harder to actually do that at industrial scale. And let me share two concrete examples of why things are very difficult going from prototype to production. You know, here's one example is, you know, you really are focused on the business logic, but then you've got to solve for three different things, is you've got to solve for the life cycle of the infrastructure that are going to run at 1,000 different places. You got to solve for all these little things that you got to run, maybe Kubernetes, maybe TensorFlow, maybe Kafka. You got to then secure all of it, and you got to make it scale uh, at all these places. Again, to go one layer deeper, you know, the things below the surface, below the business logic is, for example, things that we focus on. And here's, here's some concrete examples of some of the problems we ran into which then we needed to solve for our customers. Is if you just look at the problem of doing AI on the edge, you know, if you think about the hardest group exa example that I shared, you know, they, need, they have different models that need to be sent out to all these warehouses for different use cases. And every, you know, different models might be uh, compliant with different frameworks. Some of them might be TensorFlow models, some of them might be PyTorch models, Kafe models, and so on. So the first thing is you got to marry the model with the right framework. And then you got to compile that model for the right hardware. You know, different warehouses might use different edge devices. Some of them might use CPUs, some of them might use GPUs, some of them might use ASICs. And so it shouldn't be the developer's problem to worry about all that complexity the diversity of hardware and the diversity of machine models because the developer just needs to focus on the business use case, is how do you create an AI model that does palette recognition, for example, very, very well, and so on. So these are all the platform problems that needs to be abstracted away from developers. Similarly, as you get more and more into production, you are going to run more and more applications. They might be containerized or running as functions as a service and different applications might have their own models. And so now you need to create an edge computing layer that is inherently multi-tenant, so that the same piece of hardware can host a whole bunch of different uh, software applications on top. And that, for example, is not answered, even by new generation things like Kubernetes. And then, of course, as you go even further, as your edge computing requirements scale, you know, some of these applications tend to get pretty heavy. You know, if you think about autonomous driving, we have some customers who do roughly half a petabyte of data processing per day, per city. And those models are pretty complicated, and they require not just the power of one edge device, but the power of a cluster of edge devices. And those models need to actually harness a cluster of GPUs that span across physical boxes. And so that, again, is a platform problem they solve that is not a problem for the developer to solve. And so these are the problems that kind of come in the way going from prototype to production. And so that's the kind of the second biggest lesson is, you know, don't let prototyping success be a red herring. Don't let prototyping be a, you know, proof 
that you have success towards uh, production, towards industrial scale. And switching gears a little bit, the third big problem we've seen is, you know, there's so much creativity. I mean, look at this show floor. There are so many vendors in this world creating IoT applications, so many vendors creating IoT platforms, so many users wanting to use it, except these two parties find it very hard to talk because these IoT projects take many, many months or many years to develop, go from pilot phases to production phases. So the s third big problem we wanted to solve is, can we create the equivalent of Netflix for IoT? Can we make it much easier? If you think about Netflix, you know, movies existed many, many years ago. But the key problem Netflix solved was it made it very, very easy to distribute movies and for people to consume them. And so we think that's the problem that we need to solve so that the prophecy of IoT comes true the total addressable market actually comes true is if we can make it very easy for creators to distribute their, 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 their innovation to, to everybody in the world and for you know, users to use it. We should make it as simple to deploy a massively complicated IoT application, like the warehousing application that you saw. You know, it should be as simple as installing Chrome browser on your laptop, but it's not today. And so that's the problem we are working on. And specifically, there are at least three solutions we have done so far to solve this problem. Of course, we have a longer way to go. But one is, you know, it's very hard to create a, a digital twin of edge computing environments in the cloud because the edge has massive scale and massive diversity. And so the first thing is we actually created that. We created our digital twin of you know, our customers' edge computing environment in the cloud at any scale so that they can deploy, uh, kind of, you know, they can get that confidence of uh, kind of productizing, for, you know, industrializing edge computing. The second big thing was about the availability of interesting solutions that they, people can deploy. Uh, not everybody has a massive army of developers. And so, you know, we created uh, what we call the Xi IoT app library where we host non-trivial applications, non-trivial IoT applications. I'm not talking about applications that can recognize a cat and a dog in a picture. <laughs> Everybody can do that. But we can kind of host non-trivial industrial IoT applications, non-trivial smart city IoT applications, and so on, that people can deploy in one click and kind of get that confidence that, yes, it is, in fact, easy to get started with IoT. And the third big problem, is most enterprise IoT use cases are not about recognizing cats and dogs in a picture. It's about sourcing very enterprise specific data, you know, from their factories or from their hospitals or from their airports. And that data looks very different from somebody else's data. And so we need to make it very easy to connect those, you know, data sources, whether it's cameras or some other sources of data. So we worked on this concept of uh, IoT sensors. You know, we provide a lot of kind of in the box integrations with a lot of different data sources that people can quickly turn on in their existing setups, or they can create their own integrations very quickly, very easily. You know, you'll see some examples in our booth, uh, the Nutanix booth, uh, from some of our partners, Capgemini, Hardis, and Tokyo Electron Devices. So moving on, you know, the other reason I'm very excited about solving the distribution problem for IoT is if we can solve that, then, you know, if for example, you look at the telecom space, a lot of telecom providers are actually very busy trying to monetize the new edge, you know, in, uh, in, the, in, in light of 5G, is they are looking at uh, kind of deploying not just their own applications, but third-party applications. And so they are, in fact, looking at that very multi-tenant environment where you have access to a whole library of applications that you can deploy and hopefully monetize on the edge. So that's the other reason why that the distribution problem is a very important problem to solve. And the final point I'm going to make is, and it's just one quick thing, is you know in the context of smart cities, we learned a very important lesson, is we often start on the edge in a smart city, so for example, you know, we worked with a, with a city authority to do a traffic management application. 
And before long, we quickly realized that to actually do very traffic management very well, we need to train specialized AI models for that specific city. And so that quickly uh, kind of developed into a deep learning application that they needed to host in their private cloud because of the scale at which they were doing learning. And they needed to, of course, host a data lake in their private cloud to source all the data from the edge to power the deep learning uh, algorithms. And then, of course, they also needed to enable a whole bunch of developers in the cloud to create these new applications, traffic management, public safety, environment protection, and so on and so forth. So what started off as an IoT project quickly kind of developed into a multi-cloud project. And so the final lesson we learned was, you know, we talk constantly about IoT, but really, from a technology point of view, it seems that the need is to create uh, kind of platforms that are multi-cloud, because, you know, workloads like IoT, AI, augmented reality are going to be inherently hybrid workloads, inherently multi-cloud workloads. So those are the four big lessons. Again, to kind of recap, you know, we think IoT is about getting people started from what they have, respecting their present constraints, but also helping them building towards the future, you know, new generation software stack. IoT is about, uh, you know, not just proving prototyping success, which in fact in the year 2019 is very easy, but also making sure that people have a path to production and a provable path to production. And last but not the least, it is not just about software. It is about actually making this ecosystem, solving the distribution problem of bringing all the innovation in this ecosystem to all the users who care to consume it. And that's going to be a very hard problem. And last but not the least, it is a multi-cloud problem. And so as you start IoT projects, at least it is our opinion that you plan, uh, at least from a design and architecture point of view and a staffing point of view, you plan for multi-cloud uh, resources, multi-cloud skill set, as opposed to an edge-only skill set or a cloud-only skill set. So that's about it. I hope this was useful. Uh, thanks again for your time. Thank you.